Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another advanced lecture. Today we are studying the classification of the choroidal neovascular membrane based on the pattern of leakage which is seen on fundus fluorescent angiography. So without any delay, let's get started. So the macular photocoagulation study basically classified our CNVM into two types based on the leakage that they observed on the fundus fluorescent angiography. This was the occult CNVM and the classic CNVM. The occult CNVM is also called the type 1 CNVM on OCT and the classic CNVM is also called the type 2 CNVM on the OCT. Now the occult CNVM usually is present below the retinal pigment epithelium and is a less aggressive variety compared to the classic CNVM because of the insidious onset. However, the classic CNVM is more aggressive and presents with more symptoms. The occult CNVM that is a CNVM type 1 on the OCT which is present below the retinal pigment epithelium is further classified into two types the fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment and the late leakage of unknown source also abbreviated as the LLUS. Out of this the fibrovascular PD is the more common type. Now one question that I would like to ask you is which uh, type of CNVM is more common? Is it the occult variety or is it the classic variety? So it is the occult variety which is more common uh, and it is about 80% common compared to classic variety which is seen in 20% of the patient. So in the occult CNVM it is the fibrovascular PD which is more common. Now, how do you differentiate them on the fundus fluorescent angiography? A fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment is going to show you a stippled hyperfluorescence within the associated leakage and pooling uh, and all of this will happen in the first one to two minutes of the fundus angiography. Now here, the important point is the stippled hyperfluorescence, right? So there, uh, there will be a well-defined uh, pigment epithelial detachment, a circular disc shape, and sometimes there will be a C-shaped pigment epithelial detachment like this. But this area is going to show hyperfluorescence gradually over one to two minutes, and there will be a speckled or a stippled kind of hyperfluorescence. So that will tell you that it's a fibrovascular PED. Now, the late leakage of unknown source is also a type of uh, the occult CNVM. However, it is less common compared to the fibrovascular PD. In this late leakage of unknown source, we do not see any hyperfluorescence in the early phase. However, only in the late phase, we are going to see certain speckled hyperfluorescence and that too will not have any clear boundaries. So let us see this with some examples. So you can see in this first picture, okay, and here you are seeing certain area of hyperfluorescence, uh, but which is not very well defined. It's a very early phase of FFA. And then in the second picture, you can see that here, it has started to become hyperfluorescent however it is this is not the uh, this is as you can see here the vessels are totally filled up and then the third picture you can see here the speckled kind of hyperfluorescence is actually developing and then again in the later phase again you can see those specks more clearly so this is an example of pigment epithelial detachment or the fibrovascular pd seen in the occult cnvm similarly in this picture also you can appreciate that the hyperfluorescence is starting here and Again, it is starting here. You can see this. This area, okay, this area is having the speck like appearance, and this indicates that this is a fibrovascular PD. Again, here there's a speckle, uh, more of speckled appearance, or the so this is the uh, hyper, uh, this is sorry, the pigment epithelial detachment of fibrovascular variety. The occult type of CNVM, as I told you, it, it corresponds to the type 1 CNVM on the OCT. That means it is a CNVM which is seen below the retinal pigment epithelial detachment. So you can see here, the RP is thrown into a detachment here with irregular borders and there is this heterogeneous area, hyperreflected area below the uh, this RP detachment with the subretinal fluid. So this is uh, showing you the type 1 or the occult choroidal neovascular membrane. Now let us see how do you see the late leakage of undetermined origin. Now in the first picture you see that there are some changes in the pigment epithelium in the macular area and <clears throat> in some area you can see that here there is a subretinal hemorrhage. Now in the early phase, early phase is indicated by this. You can see there's a trilaminar flow in this vessel. Okay and you can see the early phase you do not have any hyperfluorescence in this area right and then when you go to the AV phase again you can see this vessel has started to get filled up 
what you can see is an ill-defined area and inhomogeneous irregular area of hyperfluorescence is now visible in the macular area right and then in the late phase only these two areas are showing the speckled hyperfluorescence so we know that there is some leakage going on but we do not know exactly what is the source of that leakage okay you're not able to see any feeding vessel and you're not able to see any well-defined speckled hyperfluorescence what you see in the fibrovascular pd so this is an example of the late leakage of undetermined origin okay so there will be areas of leakage which are appearing at the level of rpe in the late phase of the angiogram however you do not see any abnormality in the early or in the mid phase of the angiogram so that is important regarding the occult cnvm now coming to the classic cnvm how does the classic cnvm looks on a fundus fluorescent angiography so on the fundus fluorescent angiography you will see an early pattern of hyperfluorescence right so initially there will be a early lacy pattern of hyperfluorescence which will have a clear well demarcated margins okay so what is important here is to remember that it is seen in the early phase of the angiogram and after that when you go to the mid and the late phases uh, of the ffa there will be leakage and then there will be pooling so it is well demarcated areas intense hyperfluorescence and it is progressively increasing hyperfluorescence so initially when you start with a well defined border because of the leakage these borders are going to become fussy in the later phases so this as you can see these two pictures here you can see there's a vessel and you can see some lacy hyperfluorescence are appearing in this area and this is gradually showing hyperfluor increased hyperfluorescence with time so that is the classic cnvm similarly here you can see the hyperfluorescence is appearing in this area and then gradually it is increasing in its intensity and in the late phases it has increased and pooled because of the pooling of the dye you can see the margins have become now blur blurred so this is a classic type of cnvm similarly here you can see there's a grayish area indicating that there is cnvm and over here you can see this blood uh, you can see the hemorrhage now the hemorrhage will basically show uh, block fluorescence on an ffa so you can see here there's a hyperfluorescent area and over this part you have this high early hyperfluorescence and why do i say that it is an early hyperfluorescence is because you can see in this frame these vessels are not yet filled up with the fluor uh, with the fluorescein dye so this is an early phase in the early phase of ffa you are seeing early hyperfluorescence and this early hyperfluorescence is gradually increasing up to the late phases so this is a classic cnvm again on the ocd you can see the rp is rpe is here and you see a hyper reflected material above the rpe so indicating that this is a type 2 cnvm and this type 2 cnvm is a classic cnvm as shown by the fundus fluorescent angiography now the classic cnvm depending upon the location of the leak in relation to the fovea can again be classified into three types it can be subfoveal that means it is located right below the fovea it is juxtafoveal that means it is located closer to the center of the fovea that means less than 200 microns from the center of the fovea and then extra foveal that is leakage is more than 200 from the center of the fovea so in this first picture this is subfoveal okay so this is the macula this is very close to the macula so this is the very close to the fovea so this is juxtafoveal and here you can see it is a little bit far and so this is one is the extra foveal classic cnvm now in some cases the classic cnvm will not show the amount of leakage that you expect in a typical cnvm so that kind of cnvm is called a atypical classic cnvm the reason you do not see that extensive leakage is because of a greater component of fibrosis in such kind of cnvms so as you can see in this picture you can see that here the leakage is not as much compared to the one that we have seen okay previously so this is an example of a, a typical classic choroidal neovascularization which is associated with fibrosis so whenever you are measuring the size of cnvm it is very important that it uh, does not matter whether you are measuring a classic cnvm or an occult cnvm the size of cnvm is the cnvm proper along with that there will also be the blood which is present in continuity with uh, in continuity with the cnvm any pigment any scar tissue or any pd which is serous must be taken into account so if you have a cnvm like this and there is this hemorrhage like this present here or if there is a pigment which is present here all of these have to be measured together while considering the size of the cnvm so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day